may rise. Lord, we are safe in your embrace. May your name be glorified. Amen. Lord, hide me behind your cross. I pray, Father God, that my filthiness might not be heard by your people, but your good word that shall proceed out of my mouth. Lord, I pray that this word, Father God, will resonate with somebody today. Amen. I pray, Father God, for a special blessing, Father God. I pray, Father God, for special understanding. Amen. I pray, Father God, for a special interest, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your angels that are stationed here. Today. Thank you, Amen. Father. And I pray, Father God, that today you will accept our worship. Amen. And a testimony will be given unto your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank and I just want to say thank you, Lord, for Amen. you. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Lord. Wow. Happy Sabbath and hallelujah and Happy I Sabbath to you. And uh, we're gonna it's gonna be short, sweet, and brief. Okay. Uh, probably 15 minutes and 22 seconds to be precise. <laughs> we learned last week that there is a certain authority that comes with those that are willing to enjoy the sweet embrace. You have to earn this authority. There is the authority of those that live in the kingdom. Man. The power to heal. The authority to ask and it shall be given. The authority to knock and the doors shall be opened. Mm. The authority to, to pray and intercede on somebody and you know it is well. Man. You see, the authority to walk with boldness. If, if, let's say if you have if you have an unforgiving heart, the authority to pray and God will bless bless you with the forgiving heart. And Amen. there is authority in those that want to remain in the kingdom. And I say, wow. There is surely a certain authority that is given to us. And uh, in this authority, it's a it, it's power. Amen. Amen. It is. It is powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want. You, I want. I just want you to embrace it. It is power. Amen. Just to know Christ is power, Amen. because you are standing on a rock. Mm -hmm. Wow. You are standing on solid ground. Mm -hmm. You see, death no longer becomes death, but it becomes sleep. Mm -hmm. When you have that authority, Pastor Jude. Now trouble you cannot conquer. Amen. But now it comes with the price. We learned last week that this authority comes with you giving up something. Amen. You have to be willing to walk upright. Don't touch me. It, does not, it doesn't come just because you, 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 you came on this holy Sabbath day and worshipped with us. But it comes from your own salvation and your own willingness to walk upright. Your own willingness to say, you know, today I make a decision never to walk backwards. Amen. Your own willingness to say, the Lord is my shepherd and there is nothing I shall lack. Mm -hmm. From today onwards, I will walk upright. Mm -hmm. I will see the, the light in my brothers. I will see the light in my sister. Mm -hmm. Instead of me dwelling on the on the fault in negativity, I choose and I make a conscious effort to say, you know what, I see the light in you. You see, it, it is powerful. And I, I was wondering, I said, wow, can this authority come to a sinner like me? How, how, can, how can I get to that level? And, and, am I not too far gone? Pastor, I, I, I do not have a better example than the champion of sin himself. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9. I want us to concentrate on the verses between 1 and 9 and hopefully conclude with verse 14. 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. The verses are from 1 to 9 and conclude with 14. But what I want us to do is, I don't want us to concentrate so much on the verses. I want us to concentrate on the language that was used. And, the, and the, let's, let's, we're going to pick up a few sentences, the language that was used, and how this might not just be a, a Paul's adventure, but this is also uh, can be a Shadrach's adventure. This, this, can be, this can be a mile. You see, I'm not saying to the because Paul, Pastor Joy, uh, by this time, his name was Saul. He was good at everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if he messed up, he was good at messing up. Amen. And he was convicted too. Mm -hmm. And this is a dude, Pastor Jude, that would kill you because he believes. Mm -hmm. yeah, he believes. This is a dude that, that when they killed Stephen in the chapter before, they would come and lay their cloth on him, on his command that Stephen was, was, was told to death. The background of Paul, he is from an esteemed Hebrew family. He's Jewish. He was raised in Tarsus. If, if you want to find out, Tarsus was quite affluent, esteemed for its university. It's like somebody in this modern world, uh, where is Harvard? It's like somebody being raised in the Harvard city or in Silicon Valley. Tarsus was also uh, an economic hub. So everything was going on in Tarsus. His family was of Jewish background. So, and, and, and like keeping up with the Jewish tradition, at age 12, Paul was even, uh, was good at knitting, uh, what would you call that, uh, tent making. So everything he did, he became very good at it. And he was committed. That's another part I want you guys to know. Paul, when he chose that he wanted to know the law, he would sit for hours. He, he picked his people well. He picked the chief guru of the law and decided that I am going to spend my time learning and investing my whole process, my authority in everything but the law. And he did. He learned, like the back of his hand, the whole Old Testament law. So when he decided that I was going to do this, Apostle, Paul was well versed. He had the books, he had, he had all the knowledge that you might want to have. Amen. You see, the other thing that, that, that kind of intrigues me is this. Besides the knowledge, Paul actually took time to study what he wanted to do. I find that intriguing. That with all that is in the world, with all that he could have did, what what was it? What what what? Who in their believable mind? who do that. And then, note that, he went too hard to come on the top of the ladder of what he wanted to do. He became a commander of the persecutors. Can you imagine? Wow. And I started to think, what if he took this energy the other way? But anyway, as you progresses, the background of Paul gives us that in the, in the knowledge that we have, we come to find out that Paul becomes one of the most esteemed writers, the background of the church. Paul, not only does he become the author of 18 books, but he is actually my role model. Astonishing. Paul shapes most of my beliefs. As I was reading chapter 9, it starts as, Then Saul, 
still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, chapter verse 2, and asked letters from him to the synagogues, that means the authority, to carry out what he wanted to do. Verse 3, he journeyed, that means, you know, yes, he progressed, he went towards Damascus. There, a light shone around him. And I say, wow. What can we entitle this message? I say, let's call this blinded by his presence. I'll pray for you. Father, I thank you for this message you've given us. Amen. Amen. Father, you want us to teach your people Amen. how you can bring blindness. Yet I thought, Father God, when you came, you came to open up eyes. Amen. There is meaning in this passage. Yes, Amen. Father, I'm begging for a deeper meaning and understanding on your people. Amen. That the word that you've given your servant will not go to vain. Father. Amen. I pray, Father God, this second prayer, Lord, just this prayer of enlightenment, Lord. Amen. As we dwell on the topic of today, yes, which is blinded by your presence. Amen. Father, teach us to understand. Give us a deeper understanding, Father. Amen. So our lives can be transformed, not just tomorrow, but can be transformed as of now. Amen. 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 Blinded by your presence. How daring is that when the Lord arrives, when he shows up with all, he brings blindness. That's the part I could not understand. The conversion part of it, I'm pretty sure we are all familiar with the story. As Paul is on the road to Damascus, the light comes, he strikes him down, he falls down onto the ground, he gets blinded. We all know about that. Mm -hmm. I want us to concentrate on why this time the Lord himself showed up with blindness. You know, in the, in, in the, in the other books, whenever the Lord would show up, you'd say, the blind would walk. The blind would see. Whenever you say, you just say, open your eyes up. And you start seeing. But when he came to Paul, he struck him with his light. And there was blind. Why? What, what was the reason for blindness? We get to understand that Saul himself, the name Saul means prayed for. Saul was chosen even from his parents. The name in, 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 in the Hebrew language it says prayed for, but in Greek it says asked for. Saul was asked for. As we read in the later chapter, in the letter of the basis, Jesus himself even identifies Paul as his chosen one. The plan for Paul was there before, to me, was there before chapter 9. He was the chosen one to take the word to the Gentiles. Amen. So who else would have been chosen that would have been better than Paul? Mm -hmm. But when Jesus shows up, he strikes them with blindness. And I, I, I got to think, like, why would they be so, why, why was blindness part of the equation where there is light? How can blindness, which brings darkness, be in contention with light? Normally when there is darkness and there's light, there's what? There's light. But how can light bring darkness? Mm -hmm. I said, no, 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 no. When the Lord spoke to me, he said, no, 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 no. There is a special meaning here. There is something that we need to explore, saints. There, there is something we need to know. Why would light bring darkness? I didn't go further than to think of what my pastor always says, that, you know, sometimes, quite often, salvation is personal. God had to do something. And he had to come up with something contrary to what we know. Amen. Let's bring darkness to this dude right here for a couple of seconds. As darkness came, he fell to the ground. 
Why was the essence of him falling to the ground? And why was it that he was blinded for three days? Why, why is it that? And then how can we as believers learn something from this for the furtherance of his gospel? So we find that as we proceed, uh, verse 4, then he fell on the ground and he heard the voice, so, so, why are you persecuting me? Look at his response in verse 5. Who are you, Lord? Mm -hmm. So that means Saul already knew the, the, who had arrived. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, you see his, his, his response, who are you, Lord? If he did not know who he was, he would have never called them Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's go ahead. He says, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. Is it hard for you to kick against the goals? Let's pause right there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is kicking against the goals? What, what it was? A gold was a stick which they would put a sharp end on the end of it. So what they would do with this stick was it, it, is, it is quite familiar with those in the agricultural industry back in then. So when they were let's say taming their cow and they wanted the cow to go in one direction, they would pop that cow. So as the cow would rebel, the deeper the pain they would put on the what? On the cow. So Jesus uses the Hebrew term, right? Why are you kicking against the cross? Paul, why are you bringing suffering to yourself? <laughs> you see, I want you to follow me right here. So his first introduction to authority was, hold on, man. In your sinfulness, why are you bringing suffering to yourself? That is verse 5. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, do you see the submission from a murderer? The light has shown him less than three seconds. Who are you, I'm Lord? Why are you bringing us? He says, Lord, what must I do? What do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Then verse 7, follow me with verse 7. And the men who journeyed with them were speechless. I'm wondering now, why were they not also blinded? Because the original version of when we read this, we say, Paul, the light was so much on him that he became blind. Mm -hmm. But yet he was walking in an entourage. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, I would say, beds of the same feathers, they what? <laughs> they flock together. So I don't think Paul was walking with any saints neither. But why is that the light only showed up on who? On Paul. I'm starting to think like why? And what is the meaning of this? And he's the only one that I'm blinded. Sometimes his grace, though his grace is sufficient for us all, I think he can also take your grace in selfish manner too. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong in saying, oh, my God showed up. My God can show up right now to me. You know, my God can speak to me. Yet, in a loud voice, that you sitting right there, Apostle, you can never hear it. You see, my, my light can come to me to where you standing right next to me, you can never feel it. So sometimes to answer your question, when you see me jump up and down, it's just the light that I'm seeing. Please don't focus on why is elder jumping up and down. No, 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 no. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to also touch on this subject when, when you see, when the Holy Spirit it might, it might, it might visit someone in here. Mm -hmm. You understand? But yet it might miss you. Mm -hmm. Don't be missed. Man. Don't be missed. They were walking in a group plotting together to go kill people. Then, or then obtain the authority to go do some mess. But yet when the light showed up, only one was blinded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> follow me, follow me, follow me. Don't get lost, don't get lost. Only one was blinded. And he's now told to go to the sea. Now verse 7 says, And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but did not see anybody. Then Saul 
rose from the ground, which means so when 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 the voice came, he fell to the ground. Such was the power. But then what surprises me too in this age is nobody else fell. You see, this was personal. And his eyes were opened and he saw no one. Verse 8. But now here's what I want you to underline too. But they laid him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. He has been told to go. So, the, now, how would his friends, they were plotting to go and do major stuff. Why wouldn't they contend and say, but no, we are not taking you there, we are taking you somewhere else. They agreed to lead him by the end. I'm, I'm not sure by this time whether it was his presence or it was the presence of those that were around him. Now, where I want us to focus on now is verse 9. And he went, and he was three days without sight, and he neither ate or drink. Mm -hmm. The question is, why was there blindness? Did you see that Paul submitted real quick without blind, without without any reserve? Mm -hmm. Did you see that uh Paul did not even contend. Did you see how quick Paul was there to, to say, yes, you are Lord. But now, let's talk about the blindness. I'm pretty sure my pastor will tell you what it is to be blind. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I dug a little bit deeper and I found out that what blindness does, it brings some form of darkness. Blindness also sometimes brings some form of loneliness. Blindness on its own brings some type of dependence sometimes. You see, I, when I dug deeper, I say, God, you, you, you're such a good God. And you, you, are, you, are a, you are an intriguing God. Can you... The, we are talking about the Paul who was the commander of an army. The Paul who was a, a, a messless soul. The Paul who had so much power that he could go to the President of the United States and ask whatever he wants, whatever decree that he wanted. Can you imagine somebody with the power to walk to President Joe Biden and say, Joe Biden, I want you to free all the dogs that are in the jails. And so I, what Joe Biden asked, what do you need these tanks for? He said, I need these tanks to go and kill the people that are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are worshiping Christ. Mind you, Paul had also been born around the time of Christ. So, you know, they grew up almost knowing, hey, they saw and saw it at such a point. But we don't have a history of them ever crossing paths. But they were born almost the same time. So, can you imagine somebody with that power? And all of a sudden, they can't even see where they are going. I found out that blindness, not only is it disabling, blindness is so humiliating sometimes, if you take it that way. But in this verse, blindness becomes a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> you follow me? Blindness to Paul became a blessing for three days. Why I say it so is it gave him the lonely time to look inside, to think to the darkness, to see inside his soul without being able to look what is on the outside. Mm -hmm. Blindness sometimes gives you the space to think internally. When Paul became blinded, it gave him the reason why he was even given the name Saul. He started thinking, wow, my name means, because he was a scholar. My name means I was prayed for. My name means I was asked for. But then what this blindness brought to Paul was this. It brought a lot of humility. Because not only did he have no time to look on the outside, but he had more time to look 
right on the inside of himself. He had time to, he had time to reflect, he had time to analyze, he had time to make conclusions. But the three days somebody told me that he had, it was a seclusion from the nonsense of this world. Amen. When the condition of the out life, of the outward life, was suspended. In modern language it says, the blindness put brakes on his feet. Yes. In this case, sight and blindness could not compete. In this case, Christ in what was going on, he says, you know what, man? I'm going to sit you down for a couple of minutes and I want you to think. What blindness did to Paul too was he brought some personal intimacy to what he had lost. Because Paul, he knew better. But yet, he had spent all this time convicting of himself on the wrong path. But what happens too with this blindness is that it gave Paul time to research who he is. Most of Paul's knowledge, Pastor Jude, was coming from reading mm -hmm. and attaining certificates and degrees in law. And, but this time he could not read, Pastor Jude. This blindness gave Paul only Paul time with Christ because the only time with his soul. That's the only time he could only search his soul and could be honest without any outside interference. Because he, Paul was a researcher. He liked to read. He liked to do all that stuff. But in this case, Paul lost the ability to do all that. Man. So I feel sometimes it's okay to be blind. The question is, how can we be blinded by his presence ourselves? How can we how can we submit ourselves to be blinded? How can we agree that blindness sometimes is needed that we can become, that we can just choose for a minute to become upright with Christ? How can, what can we give up? Is it our eyes that we need to give up? Is it, what, what can we give up? Is it our feet that we need to give up? But it's, the other thing is, the blindness also comes with the cleansing that it came with. Yeah. For three days, Paul did not eat anything. Mm -hmm. God is a God that loves cleansing. Amen. Amen. After three days, he's led to a man of God called uh, Ananias. I want you to read in chapter um, verse 14. Ananias asked the Lord, Lord, why are you sending me to a person with the authority from the priests? <laughs> but my Lord comes and says, Ananias, I'm sending you to Saul with my authority to put hands on him and his eyes will be wide open. Are you following me, he says? In 14, he says, read with me chapter 14, he says, and he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call your name. Mm -hmm. But yet in 15, God says, still go, because I'm sending you with my what? With my authority. For he is the chosen one, he's the chosen one of mine. Because yes. I want him for a purpose to send, pass the message to the Gentiles. Nor did he know that this was going to be an icon of today's world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes do not underestimate that the, the, the authority that you have mm -hmm. in who you worship. Allow yourself to be blinded from those things that are pulling you away from the goodness of Christ. Amen. Allow yourself to be chosen mm -hmm. to spread the gospel. Do not sit in here and say, wow, 
I wish there could be a thousand of us in, the, in here. But yet you are not using your, your gift, your ability to, to spread the word. Amen. Allow yourself in, in verse 15. Because God has chosen you for a bigger purpose than yourself. Allow yourself to spread the word. Amen. What I like the most is when he opened up his eyes. His life changed not only by name, by a whole full 360. From the promise, Paul became the authority. Yeah. Paul became the chosen one. From the wickedness of this world, Paul, the Bible says, he stood up righteous in the, in the blink of an eye. Yes. So there is nothing that can pull you away from the presence of they, You could have never did anything that the Lord is not willing to forgive. Amen. That the Lord is not willing to use you. Sometimes we go through this journey so we can be a blessing to those people that, that are rooting for our word. Amen. And in Hebrew words, through his humility, the name Paul itself meant he is humbled. Mm. He's humbled to serve. Mm. Are you allowing yourself to be humbled to serve? Are you willing to walk upright? Are you willing to give up something? This is our message for today. Okay. And I pray that we find time to become spiritually intimate. I'm praying and I'm begging you, each and every one of you, to find that what you need to give up. Mm -hmm. Find time, journey along, and allow Christ, allow his light to show up on you. I don't know what to say. I really don't know how I can say it more fancier, but it's okay to be blind, to be blind to this world, to be blind to our friends. It's okay to be blind to those things that are putting us away from the presence of Christ. There is nothing wrong with being, you see what, what happened here, I want you to understand something that happened there. Paul gave up his life to Christ, surrounded by his friends. Did you catch that point, Pastor? Mm -hmm. When Paul gave his life, he, it wasn't in secret. Mm -hmm. He was surrounded by his thugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, when Paul decided to, to, to follow Christ, he did not hide in a corner past the He, it was okay to say, hey man, I know this authority two minutes ago. Surrounded by his entourage, which he was commanding. Can you imagine? He had the, he had the power to command Shadrach to stone somebody to death, and Shadrach would pick up that stone in belief. Boy, boy, boy. I want you to also find something right here. I want you to learn one more part. It did not take that long for, for, for Paul to become so. You see, the speed of light. You see, <laughs> the speed of, can you imagine the speed of light? Mm -hmm. So the change did not come in ages. So to those that procrastinate, it's a message for us to say, hey man, but I, I, I will give my life to Christ next week when it's convenient for me. Let me deal, let me deal with this anger that I have when I'm post on first. You know, before I can uh, I can serve you. Let me go clean up my closet. You see, that, that, that's another that's another lesson that I learned. You see, the other lesson that I want you to pick from uh, from.
from, from this boring conversation is that no sin is too deep. You can never be deeper than Paul. Man. You see, so he was a murderer. There's none that is worse than just killing people. Just 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 going against the grain. He was a servant of the devil himself, the A17. But yet in a couple of seconds, he is the Paul that we stand of right now. Amen. He is the Paul most churches base their their faith on. Amen. If there's another thing that I want you to know about Paul, is I got two more to share with you. Is that God wants to use you, even in your sinfulness. God wants to use you. Amen. Just allow yourself to be used without contention. Amen. Or Paul did not ask any questions, Pastor Jude. He said, Who are you, Lord? You already knew who it was. So do not fight when that when that voice comes to you, whispering to you. Sometimes you might just come to whisper you and say, Hey man, what are you doing? How about if you look at it this way? I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord speaking to you. Don't go to that place. He take heed to that. Don't, don't, don't contend to it. Let me tell you something that I learned from Paul. Though Paul had the authority of the chief priests, I want you to find out that the authority, the authority of the chief priests was blinded in a couple of seconds with the authority of the Most High. Amen. When he, the time he showed up, Pastor Jewel, did you notice the time he showed up? Mm -hmm. The authorities of this world, the pleasures that we see, <laughs> it's nothing. When your God shows up, Amen. imagine when your God shows up, and all you have to do is, here I am, Lord. Let me enjoy your kingdom. Let me serve you in this kingdom. Guys, I'm pretty sure you heard me. I'm, 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 did you hear me, Pastor Jim? Mm -hmm. So, the final point. Allow yourself to be blinded. Stand up and pray with me. Blind for these next two minutes. Clear your mind, clear your thoughts, stretch if you want to. I want us to get going to prayer, deep prayer, deep soul searching. So if there's anything distracting you, please just clear it. Don't worry about the prayer, it's going to be long. Don't worry about that. You see, the, the, the angel, God is here. Yes. Don't worry about that. It took three days, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to pray for three days. Father, I thank you Amen. because you are God. Yes, Lord. Father, we are closing our eyes, Lord, to remove the contention from this world. Amen. Amen. As we close our eyes, Father God, Amen. we just want to be blinded for a couple of seconds Amen. to clear the sight of unforgiveness. Amen. Father, as we are closing our eyes, we are clearing the sight of greed. Yes, Lord. I want us to clear the sight of this perversious world. Amen. Father, as we are closing our eyes, Lord, yes. blind us to the abominations of this world. Yes, Lord. Blind us to social media for a couple of seconds, Lord. Amen. Blind those TikTok videos. Lord, that don't bring glory to your Amen. name. Father, as we close our eyes, we won't find our way to places that you won't want us to be. Amen. Father, allow us to be blinded by your presence. Amen. So we can just find a couple of seconds with you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Father, as we close our eyes, allow us to search deep into our soul. Yes, Lord. Allow us to have an intimate presence in Amen. your presence. Amen. Bring intimacy into our relationship with you. Amen. As we blind ourselves, Father God, blinded by your presence. Amen. Allow us, Father, to be honest, Lord, with our relationship with you. Amen. With our relationship with others. Amen. With our relationship with our spouses. Amen. With our children. Amen. Father, I thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord. As we open up our eyes on the other side, Father God, I pray, Lord, that forgiveness has come our way. Amen. Amen. We are not going to leave this place the same way we came. Amen. If we came here, Father God, uh, saving the gods of another land, the gods of social media, the gods of this world, of this nation, Amen. Father God, I pray, Lord, that we leave this place upright so we can walk in your kingdom. Amen. And enjoy the authority, Lord, that comes with just saving you. Yes. Amen. Lord, you are good. Amen. I can testify that for myself, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I know, Father God, where you took me from and where you are taking me to. Amen. And Father God, I thank you for your presence in my life. Amen. I pray, Father God, that you do the same for all the saints. Amen. Those that are here, those that are on Zoom. Amen. Lord, give us the strength to know that you are God. Yes. Amen. Father, I pray that you give us the strength, Father God, yes. to live, Father God. Give us the strength for a new beginning, Lord, today. Save our children, please, Lord. Save our ministry, please, Lord. Save our homes, please, Lord. Save our relationships, please, Lord. Father, save our faith. Increase our faith, Father God. Amen. I want it to be known to our children that, yes, it's fashionable. It's okay to wear this garment. Yes, Amen. It's okay to take off your shoes in the Holy Temple. Father, give our children the interest, Father God. Amen. Blind them for a second, Father God, and show them the way. Amen. As you said in chapter 14, Father God, as Paul allowed himself to be led by hand to Ananias, Amen. your servant, you said he's going to put his hands on you for a greater purpose, which is to save you Amen. and the furtherance of your gospel. I pray, Father God, that we allow ourselves to be led somewhere for your glory. Amen. Amen. Where there is no crying no more. Yes. Where there is no stress, but it's no joy. Amen. Father God, a new life, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Where only you are God. Amen. A new life, Father God, where you don't compete with any other God. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are good. Yes. Lord, you are good. Yes. Bring yes. deliverance to people today. Amen. And bring deliverance to me today. Amen. Amen. Father God, so that your name may be lifted in this place. Amen. In Yahshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. And the Lord hear our prayers. Amen. Let's come on to be. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah.